Welcome to Kimmick Gaming. I'm your host, Kimmick, and this will be my first dive into the pool of lore surrounding the Legend of Zelda. This will be a Tears of the Kingdom theory. Warning up front, when I go, I go all in. So don your Zora armor and strap on your iron boots, because this is going to be a deep dive. First, let's start off with some real-world history about the Japanese Imperial Regalia, with a forward apology for poor pronunciation. I learned by reading. The sword, Ame no Morokomo no Surugi, Heavenly Sword of Gathering Clouds, which later became the Kusanagi no Surugi, Grass Cutting Sword, representing the virtue of valor. The mirror, Yata no Kagami, the eight hand span mirror, representing the virtue of wisdom. And finally, the jewel, Yasakani no Magatama, the long strand of sacred jewels, or the long spiral jewel, representing the virtue of prosperity or benevolence. Does all that sound familiar to any of you Legend of Zelda fans? I don't think there's a need to stretch the imagination here. So essentially we have the Master Sword, formerly the Goddess Sword, connected to the Triforce of Courage. The Mirror of Twilight, formerly the Magic Mirror, connected to the Triforce of Wisdom. And finally, the Tears of Light, formerly the Sacred Tears, connected to the Triforce of Power. It's hard to ignore the parallels. However, it's important to point out at this point that is exactly what they are. The connections between the rich history of Shinto beliefs and the game lore of The Legend of Zelda are not equal translations. Shinto beliefs are a real spiritual tradition that inspires and guides real people through an infinitely complex world. The game lore of The Legend of Zelda is a series of complex pieces of interactive art that merely reflects the inspirations of many different real artists and designers with many different beliefs. We are here today to enjoy an analysis of the inspired reflection and to allow our analysis to be informed by a basic understanding of real-world spiritual traditions that may or may not be incorporated into it. We will not be using an analysis of a video game as a basis for commentary on a respected religious practice. To put it bluntly, we should all respect the real beliefs of real people in the real world. Now that the disclaimer on respecting religious freedom is thoroughly covered, we can resume our dive. We are going to come back to the Magatama, I promise. Deep dive, remember? We should also consider other connections to these three sacred relics found elsewhere across Hyrule, including the connection to the three dragons and the three aspects of the Triforce. Ferosh, a green dragon, connected to the Spring of Courage. Nadra, a blue dragon, connected to the Spring of Wisdom. And Enral, a red dragon, connected to the Spring of Power. Also, there is the original three goddesses in the game's creation myth. Feori, the goddess of courage, depicted as a golden woman in a green aura of light. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, depicted as a golden woman in a blue aura of light. And Din, the goddess of power, depicted as a golden woman in a red aura of light. The three goddesses left behind fragments of their power made manifest as the sacred artifact known as the Triforce, which was entrusted to the goddess Hylia for which the land of Hyrule is named. So with all these intriguing layers present within the game's lore, why did I start this dive by bringing up the connection to the Japanese Imperial Regalia? The answer is simple, because of their connection to the sun goddess, Amaterasu Omikami. The sun goddess Amaterasu possessed three sacred relics, the sword, the mirror, and the jewel, which she later bestowed to her grandchild, who was sent to rule the lands below. The lands below what, I hear you ask? Below the sun goddess's realm, Takamagahara, the high plane of heaven which is most commonly depicted as existing in the clouds or floating in the sky. At this point, I've drawn parallels between the sun goddess Amaterasu and Hylia. I realize that I may be starting to lose you all as you wonder how this connects to Sacred Tears, or more specifically, the newly announced Tears of the Kingdom entry in this legendary video game series. The Magatama, often depicted two-dimensionally as a swirl or tomoe, is the final sacred treasure. The mirror was destroyed by Midna at the end of Twilight Princess. The Master Sword was brittle and in the process of breaking during Breath of the Wild. Trailer footage has revealed that it is shattered during the events of Tears of the Kingdom. That leaves only the sacred relic that parallels the Magatama left to overcome evil in the land of Hyrule. The Sacred Tears from Skyward Sword and the Tears of Light from Twilight Princess both represent this sacred relic. However, it's not the only place we've seen its symbol and may not be the only manifestation of this sacred jewel of the goddess. As common as the symbol of the Triforce may be, it is arguable that the symbol of the Magatama is almost, if not equally present, throughout the Zelda timeline. It is seen in the stems of the Tree of Life seedling and the Tree of Life fruit in Skyward Sword, 
It is seen on the Tears of Light vessel in Twilight Princess, as well as inscribed on the Dominion Rod. On Link's belt buckle in Wind Waker, as well as on the Wind Waker wand itself. On the armor and shields of the infamous Dark Nuts in both Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. Inscribed on the walls of different temples throughout the series as early as Ocarina of Time. Inscribed on both the Deku shield representing the Kokiri forest dwellers, as well as within the shape of the Kokiri emerald. We also find that it is prominent in the ancient Zonai ruins of Breath of the Wild, and notably within the sigil marking the divine seal on the imprisoned form of the Demon King Demise, as well as a few less obvious places. Such as those on the throne of the Twilight Palace, engraved on Midna's crown and incorporated into the facial markings of the wolf form of Link, whom Midna calls a divine beast, they are also incorporated into the facial markings of Jaboon, the water spirit in Wind Waker, as well as on the bodies of Cyclos and his brother Zephos, the wind gods. Do you notice Tetra's hair? Tingle's cheek marks? How about the patterns in the cloak on the ancient hero depicted in the tapestry from Breath of the Wild? This is the floor plate just before meeting the monk of a Sheikah shrine, and here it is embedded in the monolith at Terrytown. It's important to note that most of these references are examples of iconography, which invoke the image of a Magatama and allude to some connection to a sacred jewel or divine tear. They are not a manifestation of the actual relic. However, a few of them seem like they may secretly be true manifestations, and those manifestations have some very interesting properties. The true manifestations all have a relationship to preserving, protecting, and at times restoring life. The tears of light restore the light spirits in Twilight Princess. The sacred tears safeguard items needed to empower the goddess sword and skyward sword. But the most significant examples of these secret manifestations are the tree of life fruit from skyward sword, which is said to cure any illness, even that of a fatally ill dragon, and of course the guardian light spirits themselves from Twilight Princess since they are manifestations of sacred power and the Magatama can be found inscribed on their very bodies, or possibly that their living bodies are comprised of these sacred jewels in their purest form. So what does all this mean for Tears of the Kingdom? One last deep breath. Hold tight to the diving line. We are almost to the bottom. Let's consider what we see in the wall carving teased in the trailer for Tears of the Kingdom. The Magatama is seen in the shape of the clouds, the shape of Zelda's hair, on the platform holding this strange figure, and in the strange figure's hair as well. We also see seven distinct Magatamas surrounded by these halos, seemingly indicating a luminous glow. The only characters to have the Magatama represented as part of their own body are divine beings, or those connected to a divine being. Yes, even Tingle. However, when considering those that have the Magatama design within their hair, we are left only with Tetra from Wind Waker, an in-game artist depiction of Zelda from Breath of the Wild, and this strange figure in the upcoming Tears of the Kingdom. All of the previous examples seem to associate a divine protection with the symbol of the Magatama. It guards, preserves, and restores life to the world. It represents power, but it is a life-giving power, a divine prayer for prosperity that is from and of the gods, and it is invoked by many different civilizations represented in the Legend of Zelda's lore throughout the entirety of its extremely complicated timeline. So what does this imply about the story depicted within the stone carving? To put it simply, the story depicted here is one of restoring or reclaiming divine power, and by extension, divine authority. It depicts a ritual or ceremony that is required to achieve this goal. It also shows us the conditions that would provoke the need for such extreme measures. And that is the heart of this theory. After all the evidence for the recurrence of the Magatama that has been presented in previous games, we are left with one unifying theme. This is about a restoration of the divine to its original sacred form. Whether the story carved in this stone wall is a recorded history or a prophecy preserved, that is something we will only discover once we begin the game. However, the story is not as vague as it may first seem once all the overt symbolism is deciphered. Zelda, as the mortal avatar of the goddess Hylia, will either seek to fully reunite with her divine nature or she will need to do so for some reason. And these Magatama jewels these sacred tears will be the key to the recovery of her divine power and authority. Now that we are at the very bottom, do you want to dig a little? Excellent, so do I. If Zelda needs to return to her divine state as the goddess Hylia, we could be facing two major reasons why. Those reasons would be, her champion, the chosen hero Link, has been spiritually corrupted and can no longer wield the Master Sword. 
or for the sake of Hyrule, her chosen hero Link takes it upon himself to restore Zelda's divine nature without her direction due to Zelda no longer being alive. Yeah, I just went there. Let's stop digging and ponder for a moment. In the Tears of the Kingdom trailers, we have seen Link climbing into the heavens. His fabled grass-cutting sword, I mean Master Sword, is broken. He no longer possesses a sacred relic capable of dispelling evil. The incarnate power of the goddess has been removed indefinitely from the reincarnation cycle and from the inevitable moral confrontation against a seemingly eternal evil. In the past, Zelda and her ability to wield the Triforce of Wisdom was often the deciding factor in that battle. In addition to Hyrule losing its princess, and the world losing the immediate presence of its goddess, Link himself will have lost an eternal friend, one with whom he shares a bond across several millennia and countless lifetimes. Think about it. In a way, each of us who plays these games is Link. You remember some, if not all, of those lifetimes together. How far would you go to bring her back? How high would you climb? At the beginning of Breath of the Wild, Link wakes up in the Shrine of Resurrection. He died, but he did not reincarnate. He was revived with technology, and is the same as he was from a hundred years ago. Zelda made this choice for him, and she made that choice after she awakened her own connection to the Triforce of Wisdom, and thereby her connection to the Goddess Hylia. Obviously, something is going on behind the scenes. Some events have disrupted or are disrupting the eternal cycle of good overcoming evil. Hopefully, the story of the Tears of the Kingdom will fill in the details on the cause of the disruption, but I have my theories on that too. We'll save that dive for another day. Let's head back to the surface. In the stories of the sun goddess Amaterasu, there is a tale of a time that she hid herself within a cave and refused to come out. The world lost its morning star, its rising sun, and many were desperate to see her return. So those who needed her and loved her pleaded with her from beyond the entrance of the cave. They strung long strands of Magatama jewels from the branches of flowering evergreen trees. They hung a large mirror, many hand spans across, from those same branches. Eventually, they lured her back out, and light returned to the world. The grass-cutting sword is given to her as a gift, and an apology, by someone who felt personally responsible for driving her away. She returned to her rightful place in the heavens, and from her own bloodline, established an imperial lineage in the land she eternally favored. My final thoughts on the implications of the heavy imagery incorporating the Magatama design. The quest in Tears of the Kingdom will be one of a sacred restoration, possibly even resurrection, completing a narrative symmetry following Link's resurrection in Breath of the Wild. The quest will fall in the wake of both a recent tragedy and the revelation of a previously hidden tragedy of the past. The driving action is rising above, overcoming and surpassing the limitations or weaknesses of the world below, the mortal world. Link will be driven to accomplish something that has seemed impossible until now, perhaps even now. And in the end, this will be a story about Zelda. This is her legend. She will be deeply connected to the source of the Sacred Tears, and through her, somehow, they will be purified and made into something truly beautiful to behold. This is the end of the dive. Congratulations. You've made it further than anyone else ever has when I've started this conversation. Let me know what you think of the theory in the comments below. Also, I have a few other deep dives planned to expand on discoveries made while researching for this one. So subscribe to the channel if you want to know when they splash. If you like this video, click that like button. It's much appreciated. And as always, thank you for watching.